Good morning, class. We are all welcome uh, to the house of the Lord, and we are also welcome to the Sunday school. So, who's going to tell us the topic of the lesson we are going to learn today? Yes. Can we say it together? Mountains of blessings and curses. Once more. Mountains of blessings and curses. Okay, let's now quickly go to our Bible text. Who's going to tell us our Bible reading? Where are we taking our lesson on today? Okay, yes, ma'am. Okay. Let's open our Bible in the book of the Deuteronomy chapter 11 from verse 26 to 32. And then we're going to read uh, 27, 11 to 26, and then chapter 28, verse 1 to 68. So let's start with Sister Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26. Because I said, before you will say the blessing in your test. 27. A blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. 28. And a test if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye as the Lord knows. 29. We shall come to fight for the Lord thy God and for him in, in unto them. The land with the dark horse to possess it, and thou shalt put the blessing upon Mount Garrison, and a curse upon Mount Eva. 30. Are they not on the other side, Jordan, by the, by the way where the sun goes down, in the land of the Canaanites, which dwell in the company over against Jehovah, beside the plains of Horeb? 31. For ye shall pass over Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord will have given you, and ye shall possess it and grow again. 32. And ye shall observe to do all the statutes and judgment which I said before you this day. Thank you. Let's go to 27 from 11 to 26. Let's read uh, eight verses each. 27 from verse 11 to 26. 27. And Moses charged the people the same day, saying, These shall stand upon the horizon to bless the people when they are come over Jordan, Simeon and Levi and Judah and Issachar and Joseph and Benjamin. 13. And these shall stand upon the horizon without the curse, Reuben, Gad, Asher, and Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. 14. And the Levites shall speak. I say unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice, First be the man that, that maketh any graven or molten image, an abomination unto the Lord the work of the hands of the captain, and put it in a secret place, and all the people shall answer the same unto him. Verse 16. Blessed, I mean, sorry, cursed be he that setteth light by his father or his mother, and all the people shall say unto him. 17. Cursed be he that removeth his, his neighbor's natural, and all the people shall say, Amen. 18. Yes. Cursed be he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way, and all the people shall say, Amen. Thank you. Verse 19. Yes, we start. Verse 19. Cursed be he that, per that perverts the judgment of the stranger, fatherless, and widow, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lied, that lied with his father's wife, because he had covered his father's spirit. And all the people shall say, Amen. That is one. Cursed be he that lied with any man of this, and all the people shall say, Amen. 22. Cursed be he that lied with his sister, and daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. 23. Cursed be he that lied with his mother in law. And all the people shall say, Amen. Verse 4. Cursed be he that, that smitheth his neighbors secretly, and all the people shall say, Amen. Verse 5. Cursed be he that taketh the wife to stay an innocent person, and all the people shall say, Amen. Verse 6. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the way of this law to do 
them and both the of the okay. okay, let's go to uh, chapter 28, also read it to SS, uh, Sister Mali. Yeah. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee to do, that the Lord thy God will set thee on a high above all nations of the earth. Two, and all his blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Three, Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. For blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Five, blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Six, blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Seven, the Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Eight, the Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Verse 9. And the Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee. He thou shalt keep the commandments of thy Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. And they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plentiful in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land, in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods, to serve them. But it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of thy Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cause shall thou be in the city, and cause shall thou be in the field. Thank you, 17. Here, Brother Timothy. Cause shall be. Cause shall be. Thy basket and thy store. The same increase shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy cattle and the flocks of thy sheep. Care shall thou be when thou comest in, care shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall set upon thee chastenings, vexation, and grief, in all that thou seekest thy hand. And to fortune, until thou be destroyed, until thou perish with because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. The Lord shall make pestilence cleave to unto thee, until he have consumed thee from off the land where thou always possessed. The Lord shall smite thee with the consumption as with the fever, and with the inflammation as with the extreme burning, and with the sword, and with blasting, and with fearing, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. In thy heaven, and in former life, shall be blessed, and the heaven that is under thy feet shall be blessed. 
the Lord shall bring to the rain of thy gentle powder with dust. Heaven shall come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten by the enemies. Thou shalt go out one against them, and he seven days before them. And shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Verse 26, somebody else. Yes, Melky. Thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air, and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall free them away. Verse 27. The Lord will smite thee with the watch of Egypt, and with the emeralds, and with the scab, and with the each. Whereof thou canst not be healed. 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. Verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind man gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build an house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. 31. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail long before them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thy hand. 33. Majoration. 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall be nation which thou knowest none eater, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed all always. 34. So that thou shalt be made for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. 35. The Lord shall, shall, shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a score, with a sore porch that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. 36. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And the, and then shall thou serve other gods, wood and stone. 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. 38. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field, and shalt gather but little in, little in. For the locusts shall consume it. 39. Thou shalt plant vineyard and press them, but shalt neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. 40. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coast, but thou shalt not <coughs> anoint thyself with the oil. For thy food shall cast his foot. 41. Thou shalt beget, beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for thy shall go into capacity, captivity. Thank you. 42. Yes, ma'am. For thy trees and fruit of thy land shall be not cast consumed. 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. For thee, for he shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to thee. 
he shall be the head and thou shalt be the tail. 45. Moreover, all these cases shall come up upon thee, and shall persuade thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearken not to not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign, and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. But he said that because thou savest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things. 48. Therefore shalt thou save thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in anger, and in faith, and in effectiveness, and in one of all things. And he shall put a rope of iron upon the neck thy neck, until he has destroyed thee. 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies. A nation whose thou thou shalt not understand. 50. 50. Somebody else. Verse 50. A nation of kings and mountains which shall not regard the person of the Lord, nor show favor to the young. And he shall eat uh, the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee. 52. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fenced walls come down. Wherein thou trusted throughout all thy land, and he shall beseech thee in all thy gate throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God has given thee. 53. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thy own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God has given thee, in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thy enemy shall distress thee. So that the man that is untender among you, and the very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his blood, and toward the wife of his bosom, and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall eat. 55. So that he will not give unto any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat, because he has nothing left in him in the sage, and that in the straightness wherewith thy enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. 56. The tender and delicate woman among you, which will not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground, for delicateness and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil toward the husband of her husband, and toward her son, and toward her daughter, and toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet, and toward her children, which she shall bear, for she shall eat them for want of all things secretly in the sage and straightness wherewith thy enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. The eight. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long countenance and sore sicknesses, and longer countenance. Moreover, sixty. He will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou was afraid of, and they shall flee unto thee. 61. Yes. Somebody was not read. Yes, yes, yes. Read us. Yes, Sister Kevin. Read from 61. 61. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. 62. And ye shall be left few in a number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. 62. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord rejoiced over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught, and ye shall be plucked from off the land, whither thou always possess it. 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. 65. And among, thee, and, and among these nations shall thou find thee, 
neither shall the soul of thy sin have rest, for the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear thee, fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. 67. In the morning thou shalt say, With God it were evil, and in the evening thou shalt say, With God it were morning. For the fear of thy heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thy eyes, which thou shalt see. 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for one man and one woman, and no man shall die to you. Thank you. Mountains of blessings and curses. This is the lesson we are going to learn today. But before we go to our lesson of today, can someone quickly remind us of what we have learned last week, some points of the lesson of last week. Yes, can someone quickly give us a quick summary before we progress? Yes, ma'am. I learned about the prayer that David prayed. Yeah. How David uh, <coughs> prayed to God out of a clean heart, out of a pure heart. And then he had many shots in our memory last week. But he, according, for him, he continued to be able to the things of the Lord in righteousness. So with righteousness, with open heart, our God is concerned about us and He will deliver us from the Thank you. So last week we learned about the prayer of David. And we learned that uh, we, when we come to God, we should come with a justifiable cause, with a right cause. And we should not only pray with our lips or with our mouth, but the prayer should come from our heart. And that uh, our life should be a reflection of the Word of God. So today, by the grace of God, we are going to learn about mountains of blessings and curses. So the main concept of our lesson is that God's blessings are assured for those who love and obey Him, but severe punishment for those who refuse who refuse Him. So in other words, if we obey God, God will assure us with a lot of blessings. And uh, the first song we sang said that uh, God is here and here to bless us. May the Lord bless us this morning. Amen. I said, may the Lord bless us this morning. Amen. So, the core issue of our lesson of today, the first one is that uh, to receive spiritual blessing from God, we must obey Him in every detail. Obedience is the key to receiving blessings from God. If we are to receive anything from God, we have to obey, obey God. So, but before we are talking about obedience, uh, and uh, I think that obedience is the prayer requisite for us to receive something from God. What is obedience? When we say we are obeying God or we are to follow the Lord, what is this obedience? What, how can we define obedience? Yes, class, to be interactive, we have to interact. Yes, Sister Obedience is doing what you're supposed to do, and then right time, doing what you're supposed to do. When you and without murmuring. Without murmuring, yes, thank you. Yes, what's that aspect of obedience? People have faith and have faith in the obedience. Okay, thank you. So, obedience is doing the right thing in the right time with the right attitude in the heart. In other words, putting our faith into action. In other words, delayed obedience is disobedience. Partial obedience is still disobedience. If you obey but uh, you are doing it grudgingly, you are just doing it because someone asked you for, for you to do before God, it's like you are disobeying God. So obedience is uh, doing what God asks us to do in the time that God asks us to do and uh, with the right attitude, with joy of heart, with uh, simplicity of heart, we obey whatever God tells us with the right motive, that's what we call Obedience. Obedience means doing what the word of God tells us to do, putting our faith into, into actions. May the Lord be with us. Amen. So there were two mountains. What are the names of those two mountains? They're talking about mountains of blessings and curses. What are the names of those two mountains? Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, one is garrison and the other? Ebal. Yes, thank you. So, but before we go to this, uh, 
Our lesson starts with uh, our father Abraham. When our father Abraham was going to the land of Canaan for the first time, when he reached the plain of Moreth, uh, God came and met him there. And God assured him with a wonderful promise that uh, your seed will take the promised land. And from there, Abraham, thank God, he built an altar and worshipped God. And we thank God because this lesson that we are learning today is exactly the manifestation of that promise which God had promised Father Abraham. Our God is a promise keeper. Amen. Just as Abraham obeyed him, God made his promises to be manifested in his children. And so today, if we come with a humble heart and also obey, we can be sure that all these blessings that the Lord has promised unto us, we're going to give us today. So at this plain of Moreth, there was also a hill or a mountain, as we are learning. First one was, uh, there was Jericho, and then also was Eber. So, and uh, as we know, there, if there are two mountains like this, of course there is a valley below. And uh, Moses set up all the people. He put six tribes on one side of the mountain, mountain of Jericho, and another six on the mountain of Hebel. And then the priests, they were the, 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 the Levites were also there carrying the, the, the ark covenant. And Joshua was busy holding the, 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 the law. And the pronouncement was being made about uh, reading the laws and whenever they read the law, then people would say amen and then people would say that they, uh, they were promised to feel, to, to obey what God uh, wanted them to do. So today also, God has called us and uh, the same challenge that Moses gave to the people of Israel is the same challenge that he's giving us today. Now there were all those blessings are conditional. Say if, if, then, if, then, uh, it's an if then statement. In other words, if you obey, that's what will happen. If you disobey, that's what will happen. And uh, we read the promise, the, 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 the cases here, and uh, I'm sure everyone that was reading it with a conscious mind would say that those cases were really very terrible. And no one here would desire those cases to come upon their lives. And on the other side, those blessings were also very good. And I believe every true Christian or everyone that really is sincere with his heart would want to have all those blessings, not us running after the blessings, but rather the blessing running after us and overtaking us and pursuing us. And we are sure that that's what the Lord is going to do for us this morning. May the Lord be with us. Amen. So, and... Uh, Whenever they were reading the promises, the blessings, uh, people would say, Amen. And uh, we thank God because all those promises that God made the, to the people of Israelites, all of them, God brought them to pass. In other words, whenever they obeyed, the provision was already made there because God knew exactly that. God knew their hearts, the intention of their hearts. That yes, this is what's desirable for them to obey, but perhaps these people they'll fail. And if they fail, there was a remedy which God made for them. May the Lord be with us. Amen. So for us today also, being a sinner is by default. We are born into a cursed world. The Bible says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So all those cases that we see there by default, when we are born, we are already there. We are already in such an environment. They are what, those are the things which will happen to us. But we thank God because uh, if we make the right choice, then the blessings will come toward us. May the Lord be with us. So we said that uh, Moses was reading the blessings, and as we were reading the blessings, people were shouting, Amen. What are some of the blessings that Moses read? Our lesson brought us. What are some of the blessings? Yes, I'm going to start from here. I'll start from everyone here who tell us at least one place. Starting from the start. What are some of the blessings? Yes? Tell us one. Uh, that you are going to be the head and not the head. To be the head and not the tail. Yes, the The shall prosper. Yeah, the fruits shall prosper, yes? The Lord shall find them. The Lord shall find them, yes? The Lord shall find them, yes? 
you increase their descendant, yes, give me. Quickly. And now shall be above and now shall be not be removed. Yes, thank you, Sister Elena. Okay, yes, and now this side, let's get some lesson from this side as well. Yes, Brother Rich. They are not going to borrow. They will not going to borrow, yes. Their boss will be blessing, yes, ma'am. They are enemies who fear them. They are not before them. Yes, thank you. Yes, you want to say something? And the rain will stop speed. Yes, yes, but again. Yes. We will not be borrowed from our enemies. Yes. So those are some of the great blessings that the Lord had given unto them. And God also promised them that the Lord will give me, will give them divine health. In other words, they will not get sick. And not only divine health, also divine wealth. That they would be very rich if they obey the word of God. So as we are seeing here, God's law, God's promises, they are universal. God's prom promises are for us even today. And they are timeless. Whatever God has promised them is also promising to us because the Bible says, if we obey God's word, we are, we're going to be children, we're going to be child of Abraham. And when we are children of our Abraham through salvation, then we are also entitled to those blessings that the Lord is going to send upon us. So now, can we get some examples? I think that God said that it would be he blessed them, and God did bless them in the, fu in the future. So can we get some example of the Bible where we see that God did prosper the people? But yes, uh, new people. I want to see new hands, those that have not spoken. Everyone in this class today have to speak. Yes, it's the roof, one of the blessings. Enemies that came against Israel, and then yes, he fled before them. Yes. God gave them victory. Amen. Can we give us one typical example? We have the battle of uh, Jericho. Yes. Thank you. The battle of Jericho. What fought for them? Yes. Sister Sarafina, can you give us one of the examples of the blessing that we fulfilled later? Yes. Uh, Yes, thank you. Yes, on this side, more blessings. Yes, Sister Kevin. From the first village today, they have always been great. They have always been successful in all that they do among all the nations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, on this side, yes, ma'am. And you know the term of Gideon. He says the mighty army is only three or three men, and they run before them. Yes, yes, I do not promise that if you are. Yes, thank you. Yes, what again? What else? Yes, Helena. Even the people of All right, thank you. So we see the many blessings that God had given to them. That is so that how rich even King David was, destroying so many nations. How Solomon also read how rich he was, that many people around the world, even the Queen of Sheba, went there and she was very astonished. She was very happy when he saw the richness that uh, King Solomon had and the peace that was the prosperity that those people had because they were obeying God. So David also, there were a lot of riches. It was very rich, a lot of billions, billions of, uh, of gold that he could get. And uh, let's quote, let's quickly read some scriptures. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter nine verse eight. Yes, Second Chronicles chapter nine verse eight. Yes, okay. Chronicles chapter nine verse the king for the Lord and that, because the God loved Israel to establish them forever, therefore may he the king over them to be justice. Thank you. So she was blessing God for the blessing that Solomon had. Because she recognized that whatever Solomon would gather was because God was with them. So we see then that uh, whenever the people of Israel was obeying God, they prospered. 
God was fighting for them, God was protecting them, God was providing for them, God was healing them, God was giving them, was giving them houses that they did not build, vineyard that they did not build. God was giving them a lot of money. And uh, they, they are blessed. They were blessed very much. And even in, even in this contemporary world, the Jews are also very blessed. They are very gifted. I've seen one research that says they are, their population is, if you see according to the world, compared to the world population, is like 0.04% of the world population. 0.04% of the world population. But 20% of the Nobel Prizes in the world was given to them. 20% of the Nobel Prizes, which is a prize that they give for those who are very smart, who have done a lot of research, they were given to 0.04% of the world population. And even now, as we are talking, they are one of the 10 richest nations in the world. So we see that whenever they obeyed, God was with them and they were very prosperous because as a result of obedience. And even for us today, if we want to be blessed, if you want to be prosperous, we should also obey God's promise. May the Lord be with us. We say that God's blessings are conditional. Let's quickly read 1 John chapter 1 verse 7. 1 John, someone from this side to read for us. <coughs> Sister Anna, read for us 1 John chapter 1 verse 7. Can you read from the board? John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Thank you. So if we walk in the light, if we obey God's word, if we are close to Jesus, then we can be sure that the blessings of God will be for us. The blood of Jesus will clean us. And we can be assured that the promises of God will be, will be upon us. So this is what God has done for them. Now, how about us today? What are some of the blessings that God has been giving unto us as we obey Him? Yes, yeah, so that we can also say, no, this thing was just in the past. Today also God can still bless. And what are some of the blessings that we have? Especially when we are born again after we are we become son of God. What are some of the blessings that God has promised? And there's been performing in our lives. Yes, graduation. I'll say peace. Yes, peace of mind. Yes, Brajan Pierre. Have security, you are protected by his hand. Yes, we have security, you are protected by his by his by, by his hand. Yes, ma'am. He answers our prayers. He answers our prayer, yes. Wisdom and understanding. Wisdom and understanding, yes. We are all Abraham's children by faith, so all the blessings that we read now are also ours. Thank you. That's a very nice summary. We are yes, eternal life. So when we are in Christ, we are son of God, and we are also son of Abraham, and uh, God has promised all those uh, wonderful blessings. They will also be part part of us. So let's now see another side of the coin, and uh, my question is. From which mountain were the blessings pronounced? Yes, ma'am. Garrison. Garrison, yeah. It was at the garrison. The blessings were pronounced. And when all the people were saying what? Yes. Amen. Amen. And then they say, no, yeah, we agree with what you're saying. We know the responsibility of those promises. And we want all those blessings to be part of us. And for those that obey, as we saw, down through the history of the, of the Israelites, the Lord blessed them mightily. So now we are going to see the other side of the coin, and this takes us to our second issue, which says, Jesus still offers the way of eternal life to all those who will come unto him. But severe punishment awaits those who refuse his promises or his calling. So we say that the Lord knew that uh, they were prone to commit mistake. And uh, he set before them life and death, blessing and curse, the way, the narrow way, the broad way, and they were supposed to make to make a choice. As we read all those cases, can we mention some of the cases? 
I know they will not be our post in the name of Jesus. Yeah. But can you only can you mention some of them so that at least one is poverty. Poverty. Yes, poverty is one of the cases that we was that we read. Another one? Yes, I will read it. Strange sicknesses. Strange sicknesses. Yes, what again? Those people who have not spoken. Yes. Yes, Tamale. Hunger. Hunger. Yes. That's right. What again? Yes. Defeat by their enemies. Defeat by their enemies. Yes. What again? Yes, Sister Lena. You shall build the house and you will be healthy. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And so on and so forth. So there were many cases that were pronounced over there. Why? As a result of disobedience. One of them said that if you obey, the enemy will come in one way, but they will flee in seven ways. But God reversed it. Now that if you obey, you go to fight your enemies in one way, and you're going to run away from seven ways. Can you imagine that? God said, I'll give you money, and then you only lend it. You'll just be investing, lending, giving money to people. And the other people will give you back interest. But if it's obey, now just borrowing everywhere. Oh, please, but I'll give it to that nation. See, this is, the, this is a case. See, even poverty is a case. It's a case. It's a, it's a result of disobedience. And uh, we thank God because today we can change this state. See, all those cases, they are not, they are not, they, are, they will not be our portion today in Jesus' name. Amen. So that's why we should be very careful and should always search ourselves. You do a personal audit within yourself. Am I correct with God? Is my heart right with God? Because sometimes we, we, we say, no, this is a part of our trial. You know, as Christians, there will be trial and temptation. But sometimes perhaps you know deep, deep down in your heart you've made some mistake. Say, and you know perhaps this thing is coming as a result of your mistake, but now it's part of the trial. No. Make sure you set your heart very well. So you pray, you seek God, you consecrate, so that you know if you are okay with God, then you can claim you know, this is a part of the trial and temptation. But if it's coming as a result of your sin, then make sure you pray to God. See, amend your way with God so that God can also uh, share those blessings with you. Because uh, uh, as is, it is a choice. A good thing is to be blessed is what? Is a choice. See, light and darkness, life and death, good and evil, curse and blessings is in our mouth. See? And even when they were pronouncing those curses, people were saying what? Amen. Amen. Because it, it implies that they, they understood the seriousness of that statement. And even us today, when we come to church, we should be very careful. It is good to say amen, but let's make sure that amen is not only coming from faint lips, or it's not just coming from our mouth. Let it come from our heart. And when we agree with our heart, we can be sure that God will bless us. Because God hears our heart more than our mouth. And he gave us these commandments here for us to obey them, so that we'll be blessed. And not only that, God gave us the medium, God gave us the help, the grace for us to be able to obey His commandments. And the commandments of God are not grievous. In other words, they are not difficult to obey. They are easy. They, God gave them so many commandments. Can we summarize those commandments too? How can we summarize the commandments of God to Yes, Sabutan. Yes, thank you. To love God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength, with all, all understanding, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. And to make sure that we, every day we search ourselves. We bleed the blood of Jesus between us. Because uh, we cannot be sinning Christians. God knows the secret sins. And if you are sinning secretly, God will make sure that He punish you openly. And uh, let's just quickly read. And it's not, we don't pick it and choose. God wants us to obey everything, whatever is, is said in His word. Let's quickly read James chapter 2, verse 10. James chapter 2, verse 10. 
James chapter 2, verse 10. Yes. So God wants us to pay everything. So let's see some of the cases which they got as a result of disobedience. Uh, let's read Exodus. Someone read Exodus 15, 26. <coughs> the other one read Judges chapter 6 from verse 3 to verse 6. Then the third one will be the first Kings 17 1. Quickly. Uh, Exodus 15, 26. And then Judges 6, 3 to 6. First Kings 17, verse 1. Yes, Sister Mary. 15, 26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and would do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that he left thee. Yes, that was the promise, but when they obeyed, then God sent all the diseases. Yes, poverty was one of the one of the the result of disobedience. Let's read Judges chapter 6 from verse 3 to 6. Judges 6 verse 3 to 6. Yes. Nelson. Verse 3. And so it was when the young man was shown that the little knights came out and the Amalekites and the children of the east even, even they came up against the people and they encountered against them and destroyed the peace of the earth. Till thou comes and die, and let no sacrifice for your membership, no ox, no ox. For they came up with their people and their friends, and they came and gave the grace offers for the multitude of both they and the Achaemans were without numbers, and they entered into the world. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel by the Lord. Thank you. They were, we said also there was, there was drought. Let's read First Kings chapter 17, verse 1. First Kali, Kali read for us. First Kings chapter 17, verse 1. And the last who was the inheritance of Galilee? Said and done. As the Lord God of Israel lived before me, I stand. Therefore, shall not review nor write these years, but according to my word. <coughs> Thank you. Second Kings six twenty eight. Second Kings chapter six verse twenty eight and twenty nine. And the king said unto her, What is your thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. 29. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son that we may eat him. And she, she had eaten him. Mm -hmm. So it is really very terrible. Mm -hmm. So as a result of disobedience, poverty came in, drought came in, they were defeated, they were dispersed, they were separated. And uh, in the time of a famine, when there was no food, as we read, some of them, they ate their children, they ate, cooked them. You see, cannibalism, which is really bad, as a result of disobedience. So we are seeing what, uh, when you obey God, what the extent you can go. So they were scattered, they were captives, they were led captives. See, they were free when they obeyed God, but when they obeyed, they were led captives, and it was really, really bad for them. So those are the cases that the Israelites had received as a result of this obedience. What are some of the cases that even as we see, we see around today as a result of disobedience to the word of God? Yes. Around us, 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 y
Not that piece of mind. Yes. Sickness. Sickness, yes. Poverty again, yes. Yes, tell us one. I said everyone here must speak at that. Yes, ma'am. Okay, drought the planning. All right, thank you. In Namaka, people are killed during. People are killed, yes. There will be no rain, yes. Mama in the castle. Yeah, she said one good woman may hate his husband and his son. Yes. Baby dumping. Baby dumping, yes. But I mean, Passion killing. Passion killing, yes. Because of uh, you, the you can see, you can see that uh, most, uh, most young people do, do not live long to bury their friends. Yes. Yes, I've done the one Car accident. So, as a result of disobedience, all these social illness that we see around, suicides, homicides, just open the newspaper tomorrow. Of course, we read a lot of atrocities that are going on on our nation. All of those are a result of disobedience to God's word. So, and uh, we as a Christian, we have the responsibility to pray for them that God may uh, heal the land, but God is going to heal the land through us. That's the responsibility that we have to pray for them and make sure you reach out for them as well. So as we are seeing here, sin has really many consequences in our lives, in our society, in the families of people. And we see a lot of people being depressed, anxiety throughout. People doing all sorts of things just to amass wealth, to create, to get power, See, to borrow money and so on. So, those things are as a result of disobedience to God's to God's word. So, because they disobeyed the, the law, punishment was supposed to be given to them. Disobedience to God's law brings punishment. But we thank God that because today we are not under the law. See? To the people, Moses brought the law, but God, through Jesus Christ, He brought us grace. So we are no longer at the time of cursing. In fact, when Jesus came, what was his message? In his first sermon at the mountain, what was he preaching? Blessing. Blessed. Blessed are the poor in heart. Blessed are the big. Blessed are those that are the, the, the peacemakers. So he brought a new dispensation, a new opportunity. Alessa tells us that uh, because Israel had fallen, they did not uh, stand to what God wanted them to be. They did not obey God as God was willing them to obey. So because they were not able to stand before God correctly, through their disobedience, then God opened a way for us. And uh, this is the blessedness of the gospel. Let's just quickly read Romans chapter 11, verse 21 and 22. Romans chapter 11, 21 and 22. Yes, quickly. Yes. For if God spared not the natural branches, take it that he also spared not. That's 22. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell, severity. But to what need goodness, if thou continue in his goodness? Otherwise, thou also shalt be cut off. Yes. Many people say God is a man. God is not a good judge. And so, but they say hey, God is good. If you obey him, God will be good to you. If you disobey him, he will also be good to you by punishing you. Good parents punish their children when they do wrong things. God is a good father. That's why he also does the same. So we are seeing here because the people of Israel did not obey God, did not stand before God, that's why God also opened this way for us. But there is a warning there. Because Israelites they were like the natural olive, the natural branches. But because they disobeyed, now we, the wild branches, the Gentiles, we also have listened to this gospel. And then we have to accept it. And now the question is: if those people God called them, chose them to be called the sons of God. They disobeyed and they were punished. How much we? 
Do you think that if we obey God, God will not punish us? God will surely punish us. But today is the day of blessings. God is here and is here to bless us. Please, let's make sure that when we pray, when we come here to those out that later on, let's say God bless us and God is willing to bless us. The blessings, all of them are available here. If you are not saved, the Lord will save you this morning. If you are not sanctified, the Lord will sanctify you this morning. And then if you are not baptized, guess what? God will also baptize you this morning. And uh, as we just as we were told yesterday, don't try to rewrite the Bible. Don't try to rewrite the Bible. Sometimes because your condition is bad, you think that uh, the Bible is wrong. Or because you think that that is your portion. No. Whatever God says in the Bible, it is possible. And if we believe God will help us to achieve all of them. Just simple obedience. Just trust and obey. And we are sure that the Lord will bless us. So, this is the end of our lesson. But before we end, I want someone quickly to read again just the portion of blessings that we find in our text. Someone who read for us. And when he reads, all of us will say what? Amen. Amen. But we say, amen with our heart, really believing that henceforth, all those promises, they should be seen in our lives. If you are not seen in our lives, then we will be consecrated. We turn to this one. Yes. And it shall come to pass, if thou make it diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Amen. So, and all these blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Amen. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Amen. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Amen. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Amen. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Amen. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thee, before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Amen. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thine hands unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Amen. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. Amen. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Amen. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, Amen. in the fruits of thy body, Amen. and in the fruit of thy cattle, Amen. and in the fruit of thy ground, Amen. and in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give unto thee. Amen. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, Amen. the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in this season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. Amen. And thou shalt lend unto many nations. Amen. And thou shalt not down for Amen. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Amen. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. Amen. And that thou beckon unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do. Amen. Thank you. So let's always consecrate to the Lord and make sure that those blessings are visible in our lives. In the marketplace, at school, at the business, wherever you are, make sure those blessings are seen in our lives. But remember, if we obey God, those blessings, they will follow us. And they will really follow us. This morning, those blessings shall follow us. Let's humble our heart when we pray later on and ask God to bless us. And He's going to bless us this morning. God today is going to change our hearts. Amen. And do you want God's blessing? Then trust and obey. Amen. For there is no other way. To be happy in Jesus, to receive all these blessings, we have to trust and obey. God bless you all. Amen. Amen.